Transversal thoracic plane block for sternal pain control in cardiac surgery and surgery of the anterior chest. My name is Gabor Kiss and I'm working in the University Hospital of the Reunion Island. I have no disclosures and no conflict of interest to declare. In this presentation, I will first give a definition of the transversus thoracic plane block. Then we will talk about the anatomy to better understand this block. A very important section will be the terminologies concerning the various types of parasternal blocks described in literature which can be confused with the transversus thoracic plane block. Then we will look at its indications and contraindications of the transversus thoracic plane block. At the end, we will move to the preparation and description of the block with tips and tricks to avoid pitfalls. First, the definition of the transversus thoracic plane block. The transversus thoracic plane block, formerly known as parasternal plane block, is a new regional anesthesia technique described since 2015. It provides analgesia of the anterior cutaneous branches of the T2 to T6 intercostal nerves to the medial anterior chest wall. Analgesia is provided by a single injection of local anesthesia between the internal intercostal muscle and the transversus thoracic muscle located in the third and fourth or fourth and fifth intercostal space at the sternum. Let's have a closer look at the anatomy to better understand the transverse thoracic plane block which we will call TTP block during this presentation. The sternum's body derives its innervation from the anterior cutaneous branches of intercostal nerves 2 to 6, which are displayed here with a red circle, and the sympathetic plexus around the internal thoracic artery. The nerves lie between the internal intercostal muscle, which is labeled capital G on this figure, and the transversus thoracic muscle within the transversus thoracic plane, labeled as capital H. In addition, a collateral branch also aids in supply and runs along the upper border of the rib. Here again, much closer, you can see the transverse thoracic muscle with underneath the internal thoracic artery and vein and also the perivascular sympathetic plexus around the internal thoracic artery also visible on the slide from another perspective. This is a view on the inside of the sternum with the attachments of the transversus thoracic muscle. In addition, we can well distinguish the internal intercostal muscles. Transversus thoracic muscle actions results in a weak depression of the ribs. The muscle is innervated by the second to the sixth intercostal nerves. Let's have a view on the anatomy on a cross-section view about 2 cm lateral from the sternum. And we will recognize the following structures. The pectoralis major muscle. Internal intercostal muscle the transversus thoracic plane, the transversus thoracic muscle, with underneath the pleura. As a mnemonic, we can remember the successful muscle layers of the pectoralis major muscle, internal intercostal muscle, and the transversus thoracic muscle as pit, like pit bull. Here on this ultrasound image, we will recognize the same structures as in the previous cartoon. The transversus thoracic plane is located between the internal intercostal muscle and the transversus thoracic muscle with underneath the pleura. In ultrasound imaging, coastal cartilage is displaced as a black shadow. On this longitudinal ultrasound real image, one can see the anatomy of the transversus thoracic plane block before injection. 
The transversus thoracic muscle is identified as a hypoechoic band that overlies the pleura. And this is the ultrasound image. During ejection of local anesthesia into the transversus thoracic plane, with a spread of local anesthesia between the internal intercostal muscle and the transversus thoracic muscle. As it can be seen here, again, more simplified on this cartoon from Saturo Fuji and co-workers. We will now have a view on the anatomy of the parasternal region on a transverse cross-section of the sternum. First the skin. Below is the sternum, then the pectoral major muscle, with underneath the internal intercostal muscle, further below the transversus thoracic plane and the transversus thoracic muscle surrounding the internal thoracic vessels. Then further posterior starts the mediastinum with the pericardium and the heart, and the neighboring thoracic cavities including the pleura and the lungs. Anterior cutaneous branches of the intercostal nerve pass inside the transversus thoracic plane and then continue through the internal intercostal and pectoral muscle further into the skin with the lateral branch of intercostal nerve. Branching off the medial branch of the intercostal nerve. In summary, on the slide, the sternal cross-section anatomy of the transversus thoracic muscle in relation to its surrounding structures. On this sternal cross-section, the needle target for the TTP block is directed into the transversus thoracic plane, where local anesthetics is injected, which is displayed here as a blue solution. Also shown on the contralateral side of the sternum. A very important subject is the terminology of different techniques for sternal pain control. As terminology of parasternal blocks can be confusing and mixed up with the TTP block, we need to go into more details to get a better understanding. Many terms are described in literature for regional anesthesia techniques for sternal pain control. These blocks differ in extension of analgesia, but they all target the anterior branches of the intercostal nerves. The various terms listed up here on the slide all concern anesthetic blocks around the parasternal region. First, the parasternal intercostal nerve block. The parasternal intercostal nerve block was first described by McDonald and co-workers in 2005 and targets the anterior intercostal nerves just lateral to the sternum as shown on the slide. We will now look at a sagittal parasternal cross-section to understand the parasternal intercostal nerve block which we will call pin block during this presentation. Local anesthetics is injected into the plane between the pectoral major and the internal intercostal muscles. Literature also describes the pecto intercostal facial block, also called parasternal pectoral block. In some papers, this block is also named subpectoral interfacial block. To understand these terms, we have to go back to the origin. The parasternal pectoral block was first described in 2014 by De La Torre and co-workers as the ultrasound-guided pecto-intercostal facial block. Injection takes place 2 cm lateral to the sternum, as shown here, between the pectoral major muscle and the intercostal muscle. Let's look at it closer with a sagittal cross-section view at 2 cm lateral to the sternum. The sagittal cross-section view at about 2 cm to the lateral border of the sternum shows again the following structures. The pectoralis major muscle, the internal intercostal muscle, 
the transverse thoracic muscle with underneath the pleura. In order to perform a parasternal pectoral block, local anesthesia is injected between the pectoralis major muscle and the internal intercostal muscle as shown here on the slide. As a reminder, coastal cartilage is displayed as a black shadow in ultrasound imaging. This is a cartoon of an ultrasound image of the same sagittal cross-section view where local anesthesia is injected between the pectoralis major muscle and the internal intercostal muscle. In 2016, Razor and co-workers first described the term subpectoral interfacial plane block, also called parasternal pectoral block, for pain management in sternal fractures. However, in 2017, Ushima H. and colleagues concluded that the plane for local anesthetic injection is the same for the subpectoral interfacial block as for the parasternal intercostal nerve block. On this figure of a parasternal intercostal block, the plane for the local anesthetic injection is located between the pectoralis major muscle and the intercostal muscle. So at the same plane for injection as for the subpectoral interfacial block, also called pecto intercostal facial block or parasternal pectoral block. This proves that the conclusion of Ashima and colleagues is right, namely that the plane for the local anesthetic injection is the same for the parasternal intercostal nerve block as for the subpectoral interfacial block. So, to come back clarifying the different terms described in literature for the same blocks, we can conclude that the pecto-intercostal facial block is the same as the parasternal pectoral block, also named subpectoral interfacial block. As for the parasternal intercostal nerve block, in all these blocks, local anesthetics is injected into the plane between the pectoralis major muscle and the intercostal muscles. So for simplicity, let's call all the discussed blocks, which are displaced on the slide, parasternal intercostal nerve blocks, or simply pin blocks. Where the plane of local anesthetic injection is located between the pectoralis major and the intercostal muscle. Finally, we come now to the subject of this presentation, the transverse thoracic plane block, which is also called transversus thoracic muscle plane block or sparsternal plane block. For simplicity, from now on, let's use the term TTP block. As a reminder, TTP block is in contrast to the previously described parasternal intercostal nerve blocks or pin blocks, where local anesthetics are injected between the pectoralis major and the internal intercostal muscle. The transverse thoracic plane block was first described by Oshima and Kitamura in 2015. How does this new regional block clinically differ from the pin blocks? Both types of blocks carry risks of vascular rupture. A pin block needs multiple injections while the TTP block only needs one single injection of 15 to 20 mL of local anesthetics to block T2 to T6 dermatomes. However, the TTP block is performed deeper than the pin block and carries the additional risk of pleural puncture. And finally, there is a difference of the spread of local anesthesia. We have a look again on a sagittal cross-section view at about 2 cm lateral from the sternum. In order to understand the different spread between the pin block and the TTP block. As we can see here, the intercostal nerve is confined in a space between two ribs. In case of a pin block, Local anesthetic spread will most likely to be limited in the confined space between the two ribs. While in a transverse thoracic plane block, the spread of local anesthesia will involve several dermatomes. In this slide, the transverse thoracic muscle 
is in green, and the internal intercostal muscle is in red. The internal thoracic vessels are running anterior to the transversus thoracic muscle, but posterior to the ribs. As it has been mentioned before, for pin blocks, to achieve analgesia in a large area over the anterior chest, multiple injections are needed into several intercostal spaces. While, in contrast with TTP block, one injection only will cover several intercostal spaces to provide analgesia to the anterior chest. As seen here on the slide, in a TTP block, the spread of local anesthetics is between the internal intercostal muscle and the transversus thoracic muscle, lateral along the sternum. So back to the sagittal cross-section view at about 2 cm lateral from the sternum, which summarizes on this cartoon the different spreads of local anesthesia in a pin block compared to the transversus thoracic plane block. We will leave the sagittal cross-section view and look at the local anesthetic spread in a transverse cross-section view. Leaving the transverse cross-section and going back to the sagittal parasternal cross-section view, we can see the spread of local anesthesia in a TTP block. For the same cross-section, this ultrasound real image shows the injection of local anesthesia into the transverse thoracic plane, with the spread of local anesthesia between the internal intercostal muscle and the transversus thoracic muscle. I want to express my gratitude to following persons and institutions for kindly granting me permission to publish their figures. To the staff of the American Society of Regional Anesthesia and Pain Medicine, ASRA, and to Dr. Joanna Blair de Haan and co-workers, to Dr. R. Blanco Salado from anatomylearning.com for granting me permission to use their 3D anatomy atlas online, to Dr. Sajuri Fuji and co-workers, to Dr. Oliver Jones from Teach Me Anatomy, to Dr. Philip McCair and co-workers, and to the New York School of Regional Anesthesia Nisera. Also thanks to Bernard Rembarane and Dr. Guillaume Byland for their assistance during the shooting of the video clips in the OR. And here are the references which I used for this presentation. I wish you all success for the transversal thoracic plane block.